Employment is essential to human development as it provides financial resources for the generation of sustainable livelihoods, thereby improving the standards of living and quality of life of people. In Guyana, youth unemployment remains a central issue affecting young people. Recognizing this, President David Granger and his administration have designed a two-pronged approach to youth empowerment in the forms of entrepreneurship and education. Government in action, we will take a look at the government's efforts aimed at not only creating jobs but the promotion of agro processing and entrepreneurship and the opportunities and financial support available for young entrepreneurs, particularly at the Small Business Bureau, the SBB, the Ministry of Social Protection, and through all the programs facilitated by the various ministries. While training in vocational education will no doubt empower a generation of talented young people who in most cases just need a second chance, this administration has demonstrated that it is interested in inculcating a culture of industry and entrepreneurship. In this regard, programs have been developed to provide the necessary support for budding entrepreneurs while others focus on skills training to aid in employability. In the area of entrepreneurship, programs such as the Linden Enterprise Network, LEN, which was launched in December 2016, provide support to young people aspiring along these lines. The program provides entrepreneurs across Linden and other parts of the Upper Demerara, Upper Burmese region, the opportunity to access loans to further expand or consolidate their businesses. At that event, President Granger in his address to the entrepreneurs said that the program will open new doors for occupation through self-employment, adding that there are four pillars necessary for enterprise, investment, information, infrastructure, and innovation. The president said that the government wants to create an environment which can provide the facilities for young people to be self-employed. We're bringing all of the youth programs together so that there's a common core curriculum. So every child, whether or not he or she has dropped out, who enters that program will get common training which will prepare him or her to be employed again. I don't like to see young children, some of them who left secondary school in Rupununi, for example, drifting over to Brazil to do menial work. I think they can stay here and get a good living, not only because oil is on the horizon, but also because we can produce practically every food stuff that the Eastern Caribbean needs. You, with your intelligence, with your education, with your equipment, can produce everything that you need to have a, a good life. Another has been the SLED initiative, which was launched in September 2016 by the government of Guyana under the Ministry of Communities as a means of introducing job creation measures to promote micro and small scale enterprises so as to open opportunities for the disadvantaged and the country's youth. Through this initiative, scores of young people are given the chance to tap into resources that allow them to become business owners. The initiative has, since its implementation, enabled more than 100 youth business startups from among the Essequibo Islands West Demerara, Region 3, Demerara Mahaika, Region 4, Mahaika Barbies, Region 5, East Barbies Quarantine, Region 6, and the Upper Demerara, Upper Barbies, Region 10 regions. President David Granger, who delivered the feature address at that event, said that the answer to tackling unemployment can be found through investments in education and entrepreneurship, and the SLED initiative is part of that investment. The SLED initiative emphasizes this administration's employment policy by encouraging entrepreneurship, 
particularly for young people. It contradicts the criticisms that this administration has no plan for the unemployed and the un underemployed. The SLED initiative is part of a program that reinforces the administration's efforts to stimulate economic development in communities, especially the grassroots level. It has provided training, mentorship, business development skills, and startup grants to individuals and groups. Minister of Communities Mr. Ronald Bulkand, in his remarks, said that the origin of the SLED initiative is contained in the vision of President David Granger, who at the time of expressing this vision was opposition leader, and who spoke of the challenges facing the country's young people, including the high rate of unemployment. He said that the beneficiaries and entrepreneurs were among the first to take advantage of this helping hand offered by the government. In his 2018 national budget presentation, Minister of Finance, Mr. Winston Jordan, said that the David Granger-led administration recognizes the important role that entrepreneurship and, by extension, the private sector play in generating employment and income. It is imperative, therefore, that the government continues to strengthen the fabric of micro and small businesses, especially those owned by vulnerable groups, through the alleviation of prohibitive constraints, he said. Chief Executive Officer of the SBB, Dr. Lewell Portal, in an interview with the Public Information and Press Services Unit of the Ministry of the Presidency, said that the agency is mandated to not only assist small businesses to develop, but is also responsible for helping them to access financing for their businesses and to advocate for policy development, which can grow and develop this sector. In terms of financing, Dr. Porter said that the Bureau provides grants starting from $300,000 to $1 million to young entrepreneurs who have viable ideas once they fulfill the established requirements. We require you to first of all be a registered, a registered client of the Small Business Bureau. And when you do that, we verify a couple of things because the mandate, um, the, the Small Business Act, determines the small business as defines a small business as any business that has less than 25 employees, um, the annual revenues is less than, gross annual revenues is less than $60 million, and the business assets less than $20 million. All right, so as long as you fit two of those three criteria, you are considered a small business, and you register with us as a client. So uh, from, there, from then, you come to us with a business idea or a plan. We will sit down with you and, and, and try to understand the, the viability, the sustainability of that plan. And if you better fit for a loan or a grant. Grants are usually for small, for startups, to, to just give them that impetus to continue their, in, in their effort. So the grant program is, is, is a simple application for the grant. We'll come out, we do a site visit to ensure that you are who you are, you say what you, you, whatever you said to us is, is correct, is our verification process. And then from then, we come back and then there's a committee that meets and they decide whether that person gets that grant or not. In addition to this, the SBB helps small business owners to access loans at Republic Bank Limited and the Ghana Bank for Trade and Industry, GBTI, for the expansion of their businesses. The SBB provides the technical assistance in completing the application and helping the individual to acquire all necessary documentation to access a loan. It also issues a referral letter to the bank for the client. In addition to this, it provides 70% of the capital for the small business borrower. Dr. Porter noted that since the inception of the program in 2014, approximately 173 loans have been approved and more than 530 grants given out. For 2018 alone, more than 50 grants have been approved and 17 loans facilitated. Approximately 40% of the Bureau's clients are young people between the ages of 18 and 35. The CEO said that the SBB recognizes that young people play a critical role in the development of the country and in most cases need someone with the financial capabilities to support their creativity and vision. The Small Business Bureau, he said, is more than happy to play this role. I think the Small Business Bureau has an exceptional role here in, in the development of small businesses 
more targeted for, let's say specifically youth. Because I personally believe that small businesses are the backbone of any economy. And with all those business ideas that, that we have floating around, if we look back at some of the, the richest persons in the world today, they had a simple idea. Their, their ideas were sometimes shut down, but then somebody came up and said, you know what, let me put $10,000 into your fund to help you. So in the same way, we are actually trying to do this, like for example, the Green Tech Fund. We, we had an age limit, 18 to 35. So young people we're targeting to come up with all these fantastic ideas and to see how we can help them grow. In the same way, I believe that we would like to see um, many more businesses coming forward and give us, challenge us to even do more. We want to seek funding for those businesses. In addition to financing opportunities, the Bureau also arranges training sessions for small businesses owners to hone their skills. While specialized trainings are offered in some areas, it also focuses on generic business training areas, including how to develop a business idea, how to write a business plan, how to record financial information, marketing, and dealing with clients. So we have a sustainable mining program, sustainable forestry training. Um, then we did um, a cosmetology training because we believe that there's a need for having a higher level of cosmetologists here in, in, in Guyana. So we hired somebody, a consultant from the United States, and it was, was excellent, excellent program. It was free of cost for everybody attending. We just don't want to be able to say that, yeah, you know, we gave out $20 million loan, in, uh, $20 million in loan, and um, oh, yeah, that's very good. But what, is, what was done with that money, we want to make sure that it is contributing to the betterment of, of all those um, entrepreneurs. Minister Jordan, in his budget 2018 speech, said that additional support for micro and small businesses will be delivered in 2018 through the creation of business incubators and accelerators in regions 5 and 9 at a cost of $36 million. These structures will foster the growth of businesses by facilitating the provision of support services such as business registration, documentation and capacity building. Meanwhile, the sum of $100 million has been allocated in Budget 2018 to replenish the Small Business Development Fund. This will be managed by the SBB. Education also plays a critical role in empowering young minds to pursue ventures and opportunities which can provide them with a means of income and independence. That is why the government has been placing heavy emphasis on access to education and providing opportunities, even for those who have dropped out of school. In his 2018 budget presentation to the National Assembly, Minister Jordan said that the government acknowledges that youth represent a significant proportion of Guyana's population and that the future success and growth of Guyana depends on how equipped this section of the population is to handle emerging and future challenges. The government, he said, stands resolute towards ensuring that concerted efforts are made in satisfying the needs of young people. In this regard, a government's approach to the development of our young people is based on the twin pillars of youth empowerment and youth employment and entrepreneurship. Quote, in relation to youth employment, several initiatives have been and are currently being rolled out to ensure that our young people are gainfully employed in environments where their skill sets can be readily applied and where they can make meaningful contributions. The Youth Innovation Project of Guyana, Youth Entrepreneurial Skills Training, YEST, Sustainable Livelihood and Entrepreneurial Development, SLED, and the Hinterland Employment and Youth Scheme, HEYS, are programs designed to ensure that youth attain the relevant skill set that is required for the job market, either to become employable or be their own bosses. Taken together, in 2018, government will be investing over $1.7 billion on youth programs. End of quote. One such initiative which look at vocational training is the Hinterland 
Employment Youth Service, HEYS, which was launched in October 2016. This is an exchange program where persons teach, discuss, learn, and exchange experiences and knowledge in order to improve their standards of living and contribute positively to the development of their communities. The program includes training and capacity building in several key areas, including plumbing, carpentry, sewing, and wiring, among many other vocational areas. It targets 2,000 youth in 106 communities across the hinterland regions and is in keeping with President Grange's promise of improving lifestyles and standards of living for the youth and young adults who reside in the hinterland. It is imperative that the government create and maintain institutions which can provide young people with vocational and technical skills that can make them marketable, thereby improving their quality of life. This is where the Board of Industrial Training plays a critical role. Chairman of the Board, Mr. Clinton Williams, in an interview with the Public Information and Press Services Unit, said that in addition to running an apprenticeship program, since 2005 it has been offering training programs in a number of areas which caters to primarily vulnerable youths in society and school dropouts. And that is, our, in fact, been our main focus, to train people for those skills that are required by the various sectors in the country. To date, that program has generated some maybe 22, 23,000 skills in the various skills profiles. Um, we categorize them as technical skills, um, clerical and commercial skills and so on. Um, welding, um, fabrication, electrical, plumbing, carpentry, all those sort of skills. And um, we have been tracing what has been happening to those skills as we produce them. And the Tracer Studies has generated very useful information about where they are employed and who is employing them. For the past 18 years, the organization has generated over 20,660 artisans and semi-skilled workers that have been added to the workforce. Additionally, the renewed focus of training implemented under the National Training Project for Youth Empowerment Program has shaped the opportunity for the beneficiaries to gain entry into the regular program of recognized technical and vocational education training institutions such as the Mahikoni Technical Vocational Education Training Center in Region 5, the New Amsterdam Technical Institute and the Leonora Technical and Vocational Training Center in Region 3. The board has also worked alongside the Office of the First Lady to train students from villages in Regions 4 and 10 in Information and Communication Technology. The chairman said that plans are in train to take the program to other vulnerable communities across the country. We are very happy to work with her to generate skills, in, particularly in vulnerable areas. Um, for those out of school youths in communities that are considered to be vulnerable, as I said earlier, and we have done programs in region, so far in region four, the Boxton area. Um, we currently this year will be working in Agricola, in Linden, in region three, and region nine. Mr. Williams explained that the certificates received by the students are regionally and internationally accepted and provides an opportunity for young people to not only be gainfully employed, but to also become entrepreneurs. Our programs are so intense in terms of the quality assurance that we believe that whenever we issue a certificate, that a certificate will gain acceptance and recognition by a number of institutions. In fact, let me just mention that um, these certificates are national vocational qualification um, sort of imprints. We have now moved on based on an arrangement we have with CANTA, the Caribbean National Training Agency, and the CARICOM Secretariat to now award uh, the CARICOM vocational qualification, it's called CBQ. All those programs ultimately will have substantial marketability in the sense that we can use them to gain employment, not only in Guyana, but elsewhere. So the recognition issue is, is, is assured. For 2018, 
BIT plans to implement its NTPYE program in 18 areas across the 10 administrative regions of Guyana in the areas of block making, masonry, boat building, electrical installation, fitting machine, food preparation, garment construction, general building construction, heavy duty equipment operation, information technology, motor vehicle repairs, plumbing, refrigeration, air condition, small engine repairs, supervisory training, and welding and fabrication. Additionally, during the year, BIT is scheduled to commence the implementation of training for the Basic Needs Trust Fund in boat building, general building construction, heavy duty equipment operator maintenance and repair, JAWS computer training for persons with visual disabilities, small engine repairs, and solar PV training in installation, maintenance, and repair of solar PV equipment. These trainings will be implemented in all 10 regions and is expected to realize the empowerment of approximately 1,400 persons. The board is also looking to partner with the University of Ghana to accept the students exiting its training programs since they're brought up to the entrance level requirements through the rigorous training programs. Such initiatives will help to mold Ghana's future and they reinstate the government's commitment to ensuring a good life for all through education, employment and enterprise. Moreover, as time progresses through the government's commitment, we will see the introduction of more such programs that aim to ensure that a country's young people indeed get the chance to enjoy this good life. The president believes that such initiatives help in overcoming the problem of unemployment and will also help to create a generation of young people who will become the new entrepreneurial class. I'm Gomiti Gangrin and this has been Government in Action. Goodbye.